Hey there, this is Daniel, and I got a project here that I'm working on that I wanted to show you um, a conversion that I'm about ready to do. Um, I have this project that pulls in data from the um, Chicago Transportation Alliance, where I live here in Chicago, to pull in bus times and train times. Uh, let me switch my camera here so you can see what I'm talking about. So I have this site here that I've been working on for a little bit and it's you know it pulls in train times here's some buses here and it updates I think I have it set to like update every uh, two minutes just so it doesn't attack the API here but um, this is built on um, create react app I forked this uh, repo from um, from an open source project that I found that already uses like the real time bus tracker and train tracker. So instead of reinventing the wheel, I just uh, forked that project and then kind of added my custom styling. To learn more about um, forking projects on GitHub, you can see uh, this other video that I made earlier that I'll link to that. But for now, um, this is created with Create React App, but I want to convert it to Next.js because I'm kind of hitting some stumbling blocks to really fully get up and running and like share this project with other people. Uh, Next.js is something that I've been working with for, mm, I don't know, the last couple years. And it has a lot of stuff built in already that I don't have to worry about, particularly how pages get created. Typically with a Create React App, um, you use something like uh, Redux for um, or React Router to um, create pages and URLs and basically how someone interacts with what I like to call pages in your project. Next.js does this out of the box. So I'm starting to come to a point where I'll take this project and I want to start creating maybe a page that just shows train times or just shows bus times. And it's a lot easier for me to work with Next.js. So I have this project here. Um, you can see I'm pulling in some like API keys for the CTA buses and trains, as well as I was kind of messing with pulling in the weather. So if you're trying to catch your bus, you kind of know if it's rainy or sunny, that sort of things. That's why this portion here is commented out. This is what the weather portion that I'm pulling in. But for this tutorial, I just commented it out so I don't hit that API because there is a limit to that. I'm going to sort that out a little later. But for this video here, I just want to take basically this code that I'm fetching the bus API routes and train routes and put them into Next.js so I can kind of further this project. Throughout this video, I'm going to use this program here, just GitHub Desktop. Um, a lot of developers use the terminal to interact with uh, GitHub, and I do as well sometimes, but for the most part, especially visually here on this video, it's easier to see changes and what we're doing here. So, all right, so next, first thing I want to do here is basically start a simple Next.js app. I'm going to go ahead and just do this in the Git repo that I have already created since, like I said, this is the Create React app. So I'm just going to do that in there and then just upload my changes as necessary. So here the setup shows that we're going to just do. All right, so I'm creating a next app. It's asking what the project name is, CTA tracker. Sure, we'll just use the default starter app and it'll just go on from there. Cool, so now that's done installing. So we can just see here, if we switch over, you can see what it's created. Uh, it actually created another folder inside my project, which isn't ideal, so we're going to fix that here shortly. So basically what I'm going to do here is I found the project uh, here on my computer and I'm basically going to um, hide everything that doesn't have anything to do with um, what I'm just doing.
old project is what I'll name it. And then now anything in this newly created folder I'm going to bring out of it. Here. That's fine. Cool. So now that I moved those files to the root directory of the project that I'm working on as it sits here, we can just do yarn dev to start the development server. I believe I could just do npm run dev in here and I feel like that should be able to start this as well. Let's find out. Cool. All right. So here we are. We have our next JS app, but obviously there's nothing really here besides the boilerplate page, which is fine because we're going to delete that and basically move the code that I already have in the old project into this new one here. So let's do that right now. So here all these files are actually, they say are deleted. So I'm not going to mess with those. They're technically just moved to this old project folder. So I'm going to go in there and find the files that I need. Most of the code here in the old project is stored in this app.js file. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy all of this. And I believe that should be all I need. There's going to be some dependencies that I'm missing in this project, but this is going to quickly tell us what we need to do. So here with Next.js, this is kind of the uh, the th reason why I am I like to use Next.js is it creates this pages folder to where this takes care of our routes for us. So in this pages folder, we have index.js already here, which is basically acts as our home page. This is what we're seeing here. I can create anything inside this pages folder and whatever I name it will be the page. So if I create a about.js and then create like mm, export default function about and just create a hook here and I'm going to return, I mean, just something simple that says about this project, hit save. So now when I go over to my project and do slash about, about this project shows up without any other configuration, Next.js just does this automatically. This is the power of Next.js. Things just like work this way right out of the box so I don't even have to deal with customizing this or creating this in the first place which is fine for me. For simple projects like this, this is great. You might want something more custom depending on the type of project that you're working with, but for some like personal use like this bus and train tracker app that I'm doing, this is just fine. So I still have the old code copied, so I'm just going to delete literally everything in the home page and then paste it in here and then just hit save and watch the errors come in. So here we go. Um, module not found. Buses, of course, they didn't find this module here because I haven't ported it over. So how I like to set up my next projects is I usually like to have a folder called components. So I'm going to create that here. And these are basically just going to be components that will then be imported into the pages that I create since so just kind of being more modular and whatnot. So I'm going to go back to my old project and I'm going to find the component that they're talking about, the error that is. So here's buses. I'm going to copy this over here. And then I'm going to go back to my components folder, create a new file called buses, and then paste it in. We'll save that. And I know it's going to yell at me for the trains. Uh, the train component as well. So we're just going to do the same exact thing for trains.js. Back to components, new file, call it trains.js, and we'll just paste it right in here. 
Save that. Components. All right, now to get rid of the error, this uh, directory path is incorrect now. So we're going to import trains from components. No, we're going to go up a level and then components and then trains. Same for the buses, up a level, components, then buses. Now it should, what's it saying? Okay, the app.css. So the other one, uh, the other old project here, I had a file for just the styling. So we're gonna go to find that. Source styles. So here uh, I have a bunch of styles here in the uh, styles folder of the old project. I'm actually going to just move that whole folder from the old project to the new one since I already have all the styles here. Copy. Styles. So then up here where it's pulling in the styles, we need to go up a level since we're in pages. So we go up a level and then look for the styles folder and then the app.scss. Now look at this. Okay, so Next.js is complaining that uh, global CSS cannot be imported from files other than your custom app. So importing this file here inside a page is not the correct way to do it. So we're going to get rid of that. We're going to go to our new Next.js project here. And we're going to go to the proper Okay, with Next.js projects, there needs to be a underscore app.js inside the pages folder. So we're going to create that as well as we're going to add some more things here. So we can import the global stylings that we already had from the old project here. So in creating this custom app.js file, I'm just going to use Next.js's docs here and just copy paste this situation here. And I might have to restart the server, which is fine. So I'm going to do that now. Look at this, an internal server error. Let's see, oh, install sys. So here um, I'm importing a SAS file, but I don't have the necessary dependency. So I'm going to exit out of this server and then just do npm install sass to my project. Okay, now that the dependency sass is installed, I should be able to start my server again and we should be able to get that uh, sass file imported and my, our style's looking pretty good. I'm already seeing now in my project as this starts again that there's this uh, material UI core dependency that I probably have not installed. So it'll probably still yell at me for that, but let's make sure that that's the case. Um, let's see here. We got um, the style loader has some issues here. Probably mm, it looks like our the images that are imported into our style sheet are missing, which makes sense since we're moving over. So once again, I'm just gonna go to the old project and get into all these images that were already missing. Now with, also with the Next.js project, they have this public folder that contains static images. So I'm going to paste that image folder right into this public folder 
and then I'll be able to update the paths in my style sheet in order for those images to be found. I'm just going to search for an image here and just get this out of here. That should be it. Completed successfully. Refresh. Hey, and look at that. Now we have this blue background, which is a good sign that our style sheet is imported properly. But as I said earlier, here's this material UI core dependency that isn't installed. And sure enough, it says that it can't find it. So we're just going to go back to our terminal kill the server and then install this dependency. So what does it say here? It says it's this guy, so I'm gonna copy this and then do npm i for install and then hit enter. Okay, now that that dependency is installed, I should be able to get my server back up and running and then we can see what this project looks like. Refresh this page. Let's see if we're missing anything else or if maybe the data will start just flowing through. Oh, all right. Look at this. Okay. So we're getting really close, but it's, we have a runtime error. So let's take a look and see. We're basically not getting any data back and it's not knowing what to do because it cannot read property map of undefined. So. Let's take a look at this route section and see if we can fix up this problem. Okay, oh boy, that was quite a ride. So turns out that that was a cores issue, which cores is a whole other separate thing that we won't get into in this video, but maybe sometime soon. But nonetheless, um, I'm using a service, as you can see here, called cancores.heroco.app to kind of deal with the cores situation, and I just had to fix that up. And so now that we got that fixed, I can restart my server here and see if we can get some data back from the API that we're working with to get the train and bus times. So everything compiled successfully. So I'm gonna go here, do a little refresh, and see what we get back. Hey, hey, look at this. This is looking more familiar now. I believe that's it, actually. So I have successfully taken a Create React app and then created a Next.js app built on React and then just moved my code over um, basically by just copy and pasting and then updating some of the directories. So now I can move forward and better utilize things that I mentioned earlier, like the pages page or the pages folder in order to start splitting this out and getting a little more specific and detailed and get a little more functionality into this app. Um, if you want to take a look at the code for this um, React app here, I can put a link down below as well as on the screen and you can check that out there. There may be some differences because I might spend some time tweaking this a little bit this evening just to clean some things up. But now that I have it in Next.js, I can kind of move forward with this project and make it even better than it was before. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.